This lecture is part of an online algebraic geometry course on schemes and will be about the relation between Cartier divisors and Vey divisors. So you remember last lecture, we showed there was a homomorphism from Cartier divisors to Vey divisors. And we want to ask, you know, when is this an isomorphism or when is it injective or when is it surjective? Let's start with an example when this is not injective. So there are Cartier divisors can't always be distinguished by their zeros. And for this, we're going to take our ring to be the spectrum of K T squared T cubed. So it, th th this ring is all power series of the form A naught plus A two T squared plus A three T cubed and so on, where you notice there's there's no term a1 t to the 1. Um, and this is a local ring. And its spectrum has two points. And it has one closed point, um, which, which corresponds to the um, ideal generated by t squared and t cubed. And it has an open point that I'm going to draw as a sort of cusp because um, this is actually uh, a sort of germ of a cusp. Like if we put y equals um, t squared and let's put y equals, and we want y squared equals x cubed. So y equals t cubed and x equals t squared. You find that y squared is t cubed, which is the cusp here. And we're sort of looking at this tiny piece of it by, by working with formal power series. Um, anyway, this is a local ring. So the Cartier divisors are easy to work out. So the Cartier divisors will just be the units of the function field K, which is the ring of Laurent power series should be t to the minus one. Um, and we quotient out by the units of R. Okay, so why aren't we taking an open cover of this? The reason is if we take any open cover of this, one of the sets of the open cover must be the whole space. So we may as well just take the single open set consisting of the whole space and then Cartier devices look like that. Um, well, uh, the units, of k um, can be written as, well, they're all non-zero elements of k. So you, you, you can write them in the form t to the n times, um, sorry, uh, let's put a t to the n times one plus a one t plus a two t squared and so on. The units of r, on the other hand, um, just look like things of the form a times one plus a two t squared and so on, where here a is um, a unit of, of, of k. So you see there's no a one term there. Um, and uh, so we see the quotient of the units of k by the units of r star is just isomorphic to Z times the field K, where Z comes from this N here, and K comes from this uh, coefficient there. Um, on the other hand, the V divisors are just isomorphic to Z because there's only one co-dimension, one um, um, closed set. So the cart map from the Cartier divisors to Vey divisors has a kernel consisting of um, corresponding to K. And you can easily check that it's actually isomorphic to the additive group of K. I mean, what else could it be? Um, we notice that um, the element one plus AT 
has no zeros or poles in some sense, but is not a unit of R. Um, so this is different from the case we had when we, uh, the, the example we had last week when we were looking at the, the last lecture, when we were looking at the affine line with its function field kx, you notice that any localization of this, um, if an element in the localization has no zeros or poles, then it must actually be a unit. And this, this difference is why the Picard group to the vague group was injective in this case, but not in this case. So let's have a look at a general condition when the map is injective. So suppose, let's take X to be notarian and integral. And notarian is to avoid lots of tiresome technical complications and integral is basically put in because I'm feeling kind of lazy. So this means that X as a function field K, which makes divisors easy to think about. Then um, if X is normal, then Cartier divisors are a subset of V divisors. Well, uh, they're not a subset of V divisors. What I mean by this is the natural map from Cartier divisors to V divisors is injective, but I'm going to be sloppy and say that means Cartier divisors are a subset of V divisors. Um, so what does normal mean? Well, normal means all local rings are integrally closed in, 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 in their field of quotients. And since we are assuming the scheme was integral, all the local rings are domains, so we don't have to have a headache wondering about what this means. Um, now what we do is uh, we recall the basic theorem from commutative algebra, which says that if a ring R is normal, then R is the intersection of all co-dimension, intersection over all co-dimension one primes of RP, so RP is the local ring at P. Um, and so what we do is we look at some any open affine of the form spectrum of R in X. And um, suppose a Cartier divisor is um, represented locally on X by um, G over H on, on this open set X. Um, if its image is naught in the V divisors, this means that G over H is contained in all local rings R over P. And similarly, H over G is also contained in all local rings R over P. So using this theorem about normal rings, we see that G over H is a unit of R. So is trivial as a Cartier divisor. So what we're saying is that if a Cartier divisor has image zero, in the V divisors um, and uh, the scheme is normal, then this implies the Cartier divisor must be trivial everywhere. So um, the, 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 the kernel of the map of the map from Cartier divisors to V divisors is just zero. Um, for example, Let's look at the example we had. We had this um, ring k t squared t cubed, and we notice that this is not normal um, because t 
is in um, the it, it, in its integral closure. T is obviously a root of x squared minus t squared equals naught, which is an integral equation. And furthermore, we see that um, there's only one prime and rp is just k, the ring of all formal power series in t. So r is not equal to the intersection over all p of rp. So that shows where um, the example we had where, where the map from Cartier to Vey groups is not injective, um, f fails uh, um, because it's not normal. Um, we can, um, for this example, um, the, uh, we, we can also ask about whether the Cartier divisor classes is contained in the group of Vey divisor classes. So in the previous example, um, although the Cartier divisors are not contained in the Vey divisors, every Cartier divisor is in fact, um, or at least the ones of zero degree are in fact principal. So that doesn't quite give a counter example. What we can do is we can modify the example slightly and find an example where the Cartier divisor classes are not contained in the Vey divisor classes. And for this, we just take the spectrum of k t squared t cubed. And this differs from the previous example because we're now just looking at polynomials, not power series. So this is just the coordinate ring of the cusp y squared equals x cubed with y equals t cubed x equals t squared. Um, now the Vey divisors are the same as for k of t. And you can easily check that the Vey divisor classes are just zero. It's more or less the same as for that. The, you notice there's a natural map from this um, ring to this ring. So there's a natural map from the affine line to this ring with a cusp. And you know, that sort of more or less identifies Vey divisors of both. Um, but um, there is a Cartier divisor Um, um, but uh, sorry, the following Cartier, Cartier divisor is not principal. So I'm going to take the following Cartier divisor. I'm going to take the Cartier divisor to be given by the function one plus a t um, on the open set where t is not equal to a to the minus one. Here, a is in k, and I'm going to take it to be one on the open set where t is non-zero. So here we've defined a Cartier divisor by covering the spectrum um, with two open sets and using different um, meromorphic functions on these two open sets. Um, but it's um, not in the image of um, the function field K, um, which is rational functions of T. Um, um, so um, th th this Cartier divisor is um, um, not even principal. So so in, in fact, the group of Cartier divisors contains a subgroup isomorphic to the additive group of K. Um, in fact, it is isomorphic to the whole of K plus, which I'll just leave as a fairly easy exercise. Um, the next question we can ask is when is the map from the um, Cartier divisors to the Vey divisors and isomorphism. 
So we found conditions under which it need not be injective. Um, we can also have an example when it's not surjective. So here we're going to take, um, well, in, in fact, I'm going to give an example where the Cartier divisor classes to the Bay divisor classes is not on two. And for this, we're going to take the um, cone x, y equals z squared. So let's sort of draw it as a cone like this. And we're going to take the divisor to look like this. So here's the divisor, and this is the divisor y equals zero. And this is a Vey divisor. And we're going to show that it's not the image of a Cartier divisor, even near the point zero, zero, zero. And um, so we just have to show, I mean, it's enough to show that it's not locally a Cartier divisor near the point zero, because um, then we don't need to worry about what happens elsewhere. And what we do is we look at the local ring of the variety X. So X is, big X is going to be the, um, this double cone. And we're going to look at the local ring at naught, naught, naught. And it's got a maximal ideal generated by x, y, and z, rather obviously. Um, so let's call this m. And we notice that m over m squared has dimension three and is gen spanned by x, y, and z. You notice this dimension is bigger than the dimension of the cone, so it's a singular point. Um, and um, if we take the... Um, Sorry, th sorry, this isn't the idea y equals naught, it's, it's uh, generated by y equals z equals zero. So the ideal p um, generated by y and z has image y z in m over m squared, which is two dimensional. It's a two-dimensional vector space, so it cannot be generated by one element. So th this ideal P is not principal, even in the local ring at zero. So so this um, so the Vey divisor um, is not the image of a Cartier divisor. Um, on the other hand, we notice that if we take p squared, this is the ideal y squared z squared yz, which is equal to y squared xy yz, um, which is just the ideal y. So, so p squared is a Cartier divisor, or at least it's the image of a Cartier divisor. Um, so geometrically, what's going on is this. Um, here, the uh, divisor y equals zero is a, a sort of double line, which is the intersection of a tangent plane with the cone. And if, if you sort of think about it, you'll see that the tangent plane meets the cone in a sort of double line. Um, and if we look at x equals zero, it's again a sort of double line like this. And if we look at the divisor of z equals zero, it sort of looks like this. And now you can see that the divisor of z squared is equal to the divisor of x plus the divisor of y, which 
which is not very surprising if you remember that z squared is equal to xy. Um, you can also observe that it's sort of visibly not a unique factorization domain because this gives is two factorizations of the element z squared. You can either write it as z squared or as xy, and there's no way to um, um, find a um, write z as a, a, as a product of of other things. So, so, so unique factorization doesn't hold in the local ring at this point. Um, well, the reason I'm emphasizing uh, unique factorization is we have the following rather simple theorem. So suppose x is notarian and um, again, I'm going to assume it integral just for safety. Then if all local rings of X are unique factorization domains, then the map from Cartier divisors to V divisors is an isomorphism. Well, unique factorization domains imply that it's normal so we already know the map from Cartier divisors to Ve divisors is injective. So we just need to show the map is onto. And so um, we may as well pick some um, one dimension, so um, irreducible subset D of co-dimension one. And it's enough to show that Cartier divisors map onto this because the Ve divisors are generated by these things. And what we do is we um, pick any point X. So here's our divisor D, which may or may not contain X. Um, and um, the local ring at X is a unique factorization domain. And this implies that D is locally of the form Fx near x. Um, in other words, it's, it's at least locally the zeros of some function. Um, so we can find an open set Ux containing x such that the V divisor is given by F of x. And now what we do is we cover X by a finite number of such open sets. So we might have, you know, UX, UY, and UZ, where here's the divisor D, and here's X, and here's Y, here's z. There's no reason why z should actually lie on the divisor. And on each of these open sets, we've got a, um, a function fx, fy, and fc, so that fx equals d on ux, fy equals d on uy, and so on. So the, um, the, 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 the sets f um, F star U star define a Cartier divisor because um, the quotient of Fx and Fy on the intersection of Ux and Uy must be a unit because um, um, the, 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 the only common zero is on Dx and, and, and the zeros cancel out and um, the, the, the all, all the local rings are normal because they're unique factorization domains. So, so if something has no zeros or poles, it must be a unit. So we've constructed a Cartier divisor mapping onto this divisor D. So to summarize, the map from V divisors, so the map from Cartier divisors to V divisors is 
injective if x is normal and an isomorphism if x is also locally a unique factorization domain or its local rings are unique factorization. Here we're assuming that x is notarian and integral. Um, so uh, it's also worth remarking that if x is regular, meaning that all its local rings are regular local rings, in other words, x has no singular points, then this implies um, x is locally unique factorization domain. So Cartier divisors are the same as Vey divisors. So that's why all the examples we had have singular points. If, if, if a scheme doesn't have singular points, then Cartier divisors are essentially the same as Vey divisors. Okay, next lecture, we're going to study the relation between Cartier divisors and the Picard group of invertible sheaves.